join me as I paint this cute little ladybug. To find my inspiration, I went online and looked up photos of ladybugs. I didn't take my inspiration from just one photo, but once I decided what I wanted to do, I drew a light little sketch with pencil, and then I got started on my background. I want my background to be really simple because I want the focus to be my ladybug. So I'm just pre-wetting my background and I'm going to come in with some sap green, just dropping in my color. I just love watching it spread softly through that water. Kind of feels like magic. I'm just going to fill in that background with that green. I'll come back in at the very end and add a little more to this background, but Really, it's just a backdrop for the flower and for the ladybug. While it's still wet, I'm just going to add a little more of that sap green around the edges of the flower. In the end, it will kind of help that flower really pop out. One of the tools in my studio that I can't live without is my handy hair dryer. It just helps me speed up the process of drawing so that I can move on to the rest of my painting. Now we get to start on our first layer of our cute little ladybug. I'm going to pre-wet the area that we're going to be painting red. I'm going to be using two different reds today. I'm going to start off with a warm red, a permanent red deep. That's just going to be our base layer. Once my base layer is down, I'm going to drop in my cool red, my alizarin crimson. This is going to help give our ladybug dimension as we go. We're kind of using that deeper red as kind of shadow. We want the warmer red to be more of the highlight of the ladybug. For the next section of the ladybug, I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm just kind of pre-wetting my little section here. So I want to be able to have some dimension on this part of the ladybug too. So that paint's gray is just going to blend in there softly and kind of soak into the paper. As I look at that paint's gray, it just looks too flat to me. So I kind of tapped out a little bit of that color. I'm just going to go in with a little bit of my Daniel Smith Moon Glow. It's one of my favorite colors. It's kind of a deep purpley gray blue color and it just gives a little more dimension into those dark colors. Let those first layers dry and now I'm just going to come in and put in my little spots. You can still see my drawing through my red paint so I'm just kind of placing them where I already had them drawn probably the most simple part of the whole painting. But in my cute little heart, all the pictures that I had looked at online all had that two spots that come together there and it looks like a heart. And I just thought, how sweet is that? Who doesn't love a cute little ladybug, especially with a little heart? Just adding in a little shadow, kind of building up that dimension of the ladybug there. We're going to leave our ladybug alone for a little while and we're going to start working on our flower. I'm just kind of pre-wetting the center of the flower. I'm just adding in my yellow first using Azo Yellow Medium. Just kind of putting it in there sporadically I want to leave room for more colors and kind of mixing in a little bit of an olive green. We're going to let that dry. I'm going to start adding in slight detail into this flower. It's going to be a white flower, but we need to add some dimension to it. So I'm going for my, my moon glow. 
you can kind of see how it's purple but as it as it dries it kind of granulates and it has kind of a green blue gray purple color to it and it's just so pretty when it dries it it's like you get all these different colors without having to work too hard so I'm just kind of adding in my shadows very watery just want it to be really soft So as I'm working on this flower, I realize I kind of want to soften some of those edges. So I just use some water in my brush and I just kind of soften that with water and that green just kind of blends in just a little bit into the flower. It almost looks like a little bit of that background is reflecting into that flower. Sometimes as I'm painting, I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go, kind of figuring out what I want it to look like. And now I'm just going to bring in a little bit of my green into my flower, get a little more of that reflection in there. This kind of adds a little more interest to that flower. I'm working on my shadows just a little bit more. So now I'm just going to work on the legs of the ladybug using a mixture of my Payne's Gray and a little bit of my Moon Glow. We're not going for detail here, we're just going to put in kind of a hint of the legs. You'll know what they are, you don't have to put in all that detail. I just want to keep them very simple. Now I'm adding in a little bit of water here. I'm just going to scrub out a little bit of that red using my paper towel kind of tap it out. I'm kind of adding in a little bit of highlight into the shell of the ladybug. Trying to bring out a little more dimension. Now that my flower's dry, I'm adding in a little more shadow, give a, a little more detail. Not too much, just a little bit. Sometimes these watery little shadows kind of help add that detail, bring things a little more to life. It's helping it to pop up from that green background, just giving it a little more character. This is kind of the part of the painting where I'm kind of finishing up. I'm just adding in more shadows. This is kind of the part of the painting where I've probably gone a little cross-eyed because I've been staring at it too long. It would probably be wise for me to get up from my chair, walk away, and then come back in. But once I start a painting, I want to finish the painting. This is where I'm kind of bringing in a little bit of my own style. I'm using my Micron pen. It's a 005. 
it's a waterproof pen I'm just adding in really light detail I'm not pressing down very hard it's just adding in little bits of detail here you can totally leave this part out it's really not necessary but I just I love doing little details like that at the end here I was wishing I had made my background a little darker uh, but instead of going back in with more green I decided to kind of do an, a little effect here where I just add in a little water scrub tap out it's kind of a bokeh effect just kind of softens that background gives it just a little hint of detail a little more interest without bringing too much in to that painting I hope this tutorial brings you inspiration to give it a try yourself just use the colors you already have enjoy it make it your own and just experiment and enjoy the love of watercolor.